Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Alright guys, so today what I want to do is I want to cover a very, very specialized capacitor. It's uh, very commonly used, but it's a very specialized capacitor. You know, I'm a power engineer, so I have to know how to use these things. But a lot of engineers, I don't even think, understand what these things are. They don't need to. They don't use them in their circuitry. So... Uh, they're not commonly understood, but they're commonly used. Everything has an EMI filter, so you have to have safety caps in that EMI filter, okay? And here, I'm going to come over here and show you a bunch of the caps, show you what they look like, but I just want to kind of talk about and, sh and explain what they are and where they're used. Now, what I did is I ducked through a box. I was pulling out stuff, looking for parts and stuff, and I've had these kits around for a long time, 18, 19 years. Uh, I worked for uh, Hughes Network Systems in Maryland, Germantown, Maryland, DirecTV. And I designed a power supply for the first high-definition uh, set-top box for satellite TV. That's pretty cool, huh? My claim to fame. <laughs> anyway, so that's where I've had these kits. Back then, they are $29.95. I don't know if the price has gone up or down, but... Uh, that wasn't a bad price for a nice kit like this. So I, I'm going to show you what the, is inside them, but I also want to just kind of explain why they're special caps and why they're called safety caps. They're also called RFI caps, EMI caps, uh, Y caps, X caps. So, and Y caps and X caps are what I want to talk about because they're both safety caps, but depending on the location and your circuit, is you know depends on what they're called and what's required so this is your common emi filter and this is your combo choke and this is a zoro symbol showing that they're both on the same core and they're in the same polarity the dots on this end or or you could have a combo choke looks like this dots on this end. it doesn't matter what side the dots are on as long as they're both on the same end and you know, I'll just quickly explain what a combo choke is because it's kind of a special kind of choke. Uh, your normal current flow is in here from your line out your neutral. So that's also called normal mode. Okay? Or differential mode because it's the differential current. Common mode is, let's say you have two scope probes you take the grounds and you time to your chassis right here on these two caps and then you put one probe here one probe here uh, you'll see some noise and it'll be kind of the same image on both things so there is the common noise found here and common to this it's it's the same noise on both lines and it's trying to come out of your power supply and as it goes through here it builds a field and as this one goes through and builds a field they, the dots are, it's in the same polarity, so the field gets real big, and it chokes it off. It builds a lot of inductance. Now your normal mode comes in here, no dot, and flows through and hits a dot. So as this one builds a field, this one builds the opposite field, and those fields collapse. They cancel each other. And so uh, if, it's, if it was a perfect ideal combo choke, that's all you'd get is no inductance. They'd perfectly cancel, but they're not perfect. So you're going to get some leakage inductance, also called differential inductance or normal mode inductance. And these caps are differential because they're across your lines. And so they're going to filter that normal mode stuff. These two guys are tied to your chassis, so they're common to each line and they're going to fill your common mode stuff. Because these guys are tied to line, they're called the Y caps. It kind of looks like a Y, right? <laughs> and these are X. They're across the lines. Okay? So line to neutral, line to line, you know, all that stuff. Any any line to line type connection is across the line, so it's an X. Now the Y caps have to be built a little more safe than these caps. But why do they all have to have all this safety? Well, 
they have to be reliable. That's why they're calling them safety caps. They have to be able to exist in this kind of the front end of the, you know, they're kind of on the front line here. They, they're the first thing that your equipment sees when you plug it into your power line is the power, any transients, anything going on out here, your, your equipment's going to see that. This filter is going to see that. So if you have a, a compressor making spikes, a motor turning on and off, uh, a lightning strike outside hits the ground, comes in on your power lines, any of those spikes coming in, they could puncture the capacitor, short it, create a problem. You don't want that. And uh, you definitely don't want to short your chassis. That's really unsafe. That chassis is, and that is going to... You know, this chassis connection is going to go back to the earth ground connection and go down your power cord, right? That's supposed to be kind of a safe uh, zone there. You're not supposed to have current flow on that. So you don't want a lightning strike killing one of these capacitors and having a short to your chassis. So you want these guys to have an extra insulation, extra dielectric between the plates on the capacitor. So these are double insulated. And... So these are the Y caps because they're going to chassis. Anything going to earth ground, you know, to chassis connection is a Y cap. Line to line is X caps. Just kind of want to drill that in. <laughs> so now there's different classifications. Uh, there's a classification three. So X3, X2, X1, X1 being the highest. And same Y3, Y2, and Y1 being the highest. I don't think I've ever seen X3 or Y3. I kind of wonder if they exist, maybe just in a, you know, in some specification and data sheet somewhere. But because in residential use here, like in the home use, if you're designing stuff for that, uh, needs to be X2 and Y2. Okay. And for industrial three phase higher voltage system, then it's X1, Y1. Now, that's all you have to really know is to, if you're using things in, you know, residential use, use the X2s, Y2s. When you look at the voltage rate on the cap, it can throw you maybe. It'll say X2, say 275, but you might see another one, X2 that says 300. Say, God, which one should I use? They're both X2s, and if you're using it here in the States for 120 volt, 60 hertz, as long as it says X2, that's what you use, okay? But I've seen where some vendors will rate some at different voltages. And I'm not sure if UO actually recognizes that or they just recognize the fact that they have to be at least uh, 275 or it might be 250 even. But, and I've seen, so on an X1, it has to be, uh, I think, at least 400. But I've seen 440. So it's a little confusing to me too on those voltages because I've seen different voltages on the caps. But, and it's been a while since they've, I've had to uh, work with UL on something like this. But are they interchangeable? Kind of. I think an X1 can replace a Y2. Or, you know, you can always replace the the same numbers back from a Y to an X. You can always, because since Y ratings are higher, you can always go from, say, a Y2 to an X2, or a Y1 to X1. But use, you know, because the, the Y ratings are just rated higher for the same number, okay? But, and some capacitors, they actually show both ratings on the capacitor. So on the capacitor, because they're physically large because of all the dielectric and the safety built into them. So they're, they're physically large caps. I've seen... Uh, an engineer where he's like, well, how come I've got a thousand volt cap? Can I use that? And I can no. The reason why is even though this guy might be rated for say 275, it's written on the capacitor X2 275, and he's got a thousand volt cap. Well, it's like, well, yeah, but the other thing is because those spikes and surges we're talking about, this guy's rated for 2500 volt spike rating, and this guy has to be double that, 5000 volts. So, uh, X1, this guy has to be rated for 4,000 volt spike. This guy has to be rated for 8,000 volt, a Y1. So, they can take some abuse and keep going. 
So, all right. So anyway, uh, oh, there's one more thing about this I want to bring up. I didn't want to get into the EMI filler design too much. Don't want to take too much time, but the uh, these Y caps, as far as capacitance value goes, they're always smaller in capacitance. Uh, th let's say again, residential use, 120 volts, 60 hertz system. Uh, there's going to be a certain amount of current leaking off in this chassis going back on your earth ground going back to your service entrance because where the power comes in to this you know to the home neutral and chassis are tied together or neutral and earth ground are tied together so you'll have this leakage path you don't want current flowing on your chassis you know I don't want to touch uh, you know one of my pieces of equipment over here and reach over and grab something else and find out that one of them has a higher potential on it because it had a higher leakage current and I end up being the guy equalizing those you know those two things yeah you don't want to be that guy so UL limits it for residential use 0.5 milliamps industrial use I think it's 3 milliamps um, if it's over half a milliamp you normally need a sticker on the thing saying that this current is over you know it's can be three milliamps so yeah so the a typical value for these in the US for you know residential to that it's 40 4700 picofarads you're gonna see a 4700 4700 picofarad cap here that's about as big as you can go and still pass the leakage current test and that test the way it's performed is they take the line of neutral time together and take their AC power supply and, and, and tie those things together and put one conductor there. The other conductor goes on earth ground, which goes to your chassis. So the current path is through here, through each one of these caps, through your chassis, back to your earth ground. So these caps are essentially in parallel, okay? So take 4,700, you know, times two, do the one over, you know, find out your XSC equation, and put your 120 volts over the XSC. C. That'll tell you how much leakage current you have. Okay, just wanted to kind of point that out. That's why you always see these guys small values in picofarads. And also because because of the dielectric and all the safety built in, and uh, they would be gigantic if you had the same value as an X cap. So that's why you don't often use a Y cap in an X cap location because these X caps usually want them higher capacitance, like not 4700 puff, you probably want a one microfarad or you might want a 2.2 microfarad for that matter. So yeah, a Y cap 2.2 would be gigantic, but no one would use a 2.2 in a Y, so you wouldn't find it. All right, let's come over and take a look at them. Hey guys, just before I bring you over here, what I want to do is I want to point out this guy right here. You're going to see it when I bring it in close. It's the Roterstein badge up here uh, in the Vache symbol. Vache owns Roterstein now. So I just want to explain something about that because uh, there's some poly caps and ceramics. But Roterstein was known for their poly caps, their polypropylene capacitors. They had polycarbonate, they had different kinds of poly caps. But their German company and uh, you know, I got into the audiophile stuff back in college, and I I love to find those capacitors, and they made resistors as well. So Vache bought up that company, and so now they're under Vache's umbrella, but amazing company. When I lived in North Carolina, I went to the plant where they make these things, and they gave me, uh, and maybe that's where I got this kid, actually, but... Uh, yeah, so I got a bunch of samples from them back then. That was pretty cool. They just gave them to us. So uh, really cool company, premium parts, and just wanted to point that out, okay? Because when you do buy components, capacitors like poly caps and that, they're not all, they all meet the UL standard, but as far as the quality, you know, some people might say that some are better than others. But Roterstein, uh, you know, Brings back memories. <laughs> Just want to throw that out there. Okay. All right, guys. And this is what the kit would look like. Let me just open it up. 
and you get a bunch of parts like that. And that's kind of a map of it. And okay, guys, and I have a sample of each uh, part in each bin right here. You can see these are the Y1s. They don't say, but these are Y2s up here. And then the X1s, they actually say X2. Now, guys, also you can have a capacitor. The, a Y capacitor, because it's double insulated, can actually serve as an X capacitor too. So say a, a Y1 could be an X2. So if you see on this capacitor, you can see that it has both ratings. And that's kind of what they look like. Here, let me get one of the box capacitors. Okay, and this is what I call the box capacitors. So you see the VDE mark, the UL mark, and the CSA mark. So there's the next two. That's big cap, 2.2 microfarads. Hey guys, so what do you think? Oh, and by the way, uh, give a thumbs up for the video, okay? Uh, that helps a lot. And uh, I want to thank the Patreons for the support. Anybody's supporting me through the uh, PayPal link below. That's awesome. And thanks, guys, for watching. And let me know what you think of this. And uh, hope you liked it.